my fears God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see Bigger than all my questions Bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see Bigger than all the shadows that fall across my path God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see Bigger than all confusion, bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears God is bigger than any mountain that I can See. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all the giants of fear and unbelief, God is bigger than any mountain that I can cannot see. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Great to see everyone. What a blessing it is. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. What a, I am glad to be here, and I'm glad to see everyone tonight. Just want to welcome everyone. Look forward to what the Lord has in store for us tonight. So join with me as we open with some prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do praise you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've blessed us with. Well, Lord, what a blessing it is to be back in your house, to worship you, to praise you, and, Lord, to hear from you. And so, Lord, we just pray that, Lord, you would have your way in the service tonight. Lord, that in everything that is said and done, it would be for one purpose, and that is to glorify Christ, that souls would be saved and lives would be changed. Holy Spirit, we need you. We know that without you, we can do nothing. So we just pray, Lord, that you would have your way. Lord, use us, empower us, and Lord, help us, Lord, to continue, Lord, to do the work that you've called each one of us to do, and that is to win the lost. Lord, we surrender the service into your hands. We thank and praise you. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. It's a blessing once again to be in the house of God. How many of you are glad to be free tonight? Amen. Let's sing this old song, He Set Me Free. Once like a bird in prison, I dwelt no freedom from my sorrow I fell. But Jesus came and listened to me. He set me free, yes, he 
set me free and he broke the bond of prison for me I'm glory bound my Jesus to see for oh, glory to God he set me free goodbye to sin and things that confound not a For glory to God, He set me free. Well, goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of this world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to and glory to God. I'm going through. He set me free. A prison for me I'm glory bound My Jesus to see For glory to God He set me free Yes, He set me free Yes, He set me free He broke the bond A prison for me I'm glory bound My Jesus to see For glory was once my home I was a slave helpless in sin did wrong love life did crib but then I looked up to heaven's throne Christ came to say I'm a living in Canaan living Darkness within, Christ the Savior, who me drew near, my heart to win. I'm living in Canaan, living in Canaan now, living on Canaan's side. Reach up behind, cross over Jordan wide, gladness to find. My soul is satisfied, no longer I am blind, living with Jesus up in Savior, your soul is found and you'll sing this song. I'm living in Canaan, living in Canaan now, living on Canaan's side. Reach up behind, cross over Jordan wide, gladness to find. Well, my soul is satisfied, no longer I am blind, living with Jesus up in Canaan right now. Them were the old time songs that I'm used to, and them were the old quartet songs that I was brought up on. I was 
telling Jade she's singing tonight, and I was telling her, she said, next time you can pick one out. I said, you don't want me to pick one out. All I know is the old ones. And, uh, but I love that song. We used to sing that all the time when I was a kid. My mom sung high tenor, and uh, every time I hear that song, I think of mom coming in on that. And I tell you what, I miss those times. I miss those times, especially at Christmas time. I miss those times. But, man, I had a great example and uh, had a great family that brought me up in the house of God, and I appreciate that so much. I'm glad that God put me where He put me. Aren't you? Aren't you glad about that? Glad to be here tonight. I'm glad that God has uh, shown us mercy another year. Uh, I know there's a lot of things going on around us that we need to pray for, but I'll tell you, there's just uh, there's too much to gain to lose. And I'm so thankful today that I have my heart, my mind's made up, my foot's on the rock. And I believe in whom I believe, and I'm thankful for that tonight. I'm just so happy about that. Can't wait for Jade to sing tonight. I'm praying for her, and uh, I just I just know she's going to do a great job. She picked a great song with a great message, Amen. and I'm praying that God would just use her and help her what she needs do what she needs to do. I want don't forget about our don't forget about our, our plates in the back. We always like to bring that up, but you guys have been doing a good job of that. We appreciate that. Yes. Yes, amen. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. Anybody else have something special before we go on requests? I know Vicky was supposed to sing tonight, but her and her husband and daughters all got the flu, I think. Tonight. She has, she has it too. They all three got the flu. I know Leah's, uh, we, Leah's on the list, but we, I talked to her a little bit. She's finally home, but she said she's just absolutely wore out. And uh, so I know she needs special prayer tonight. Doug and Wilma certainly needs our prayers. I know they're going through a great trial uh, as well. Bobby Drew come down with the flu, I think. I think all them girls was together at one time. And I know Amy and the kids are got the flu too, so they must have probably either caught it or caught it from the kids or whatever, but we need to remember them in prayer. Uh, George and Joan Holland need our prayers. Uh, Paul Deaton and uh, Charlie Hines also with Tess. We need to remember uh, in prayer. And then Amanda had surgery today, Tina's daughter. Had surgery today, and uh, she has. She had, they, they don't know if she got breast cancer or not, but they had to take off some lumps. And so we're praying that those will come back good, and praying that everything will be taken care of. And most of all, we pray for their pray for their souls. You know that everything will be all right with that. Amen. Pray that God would move on that situation. You know, sometimes things happen to us for a reason. I told Leah the other day she was so discouraged because she couldn't figure out why God was letting her suffer. And I said, well, you know, sometimes we go through suffering like that because you don't never know what could have been or, or might have been had you been well. So, you know, you've got you to take the good times or the bad times. Just trust God. And if you'll trust Him, I believe God will take care of that. Remember so in all, those that could be here tonight and aren't. Yes, just remember those that could be here and aren't, aren't here. And also my, my grandson, we went to uh, Tennessee, and he'd had a cold all weekend. And, and we got back, and then his mom had to have surgery uh, while we were gone. She, she had some female issues, and they had to take some things out. I don't know what all happened, but she had to go through that, and she's at home. So I'd like to remember Rachel tonight as well as, well as Michael. Pray that they'd bless that family. I know you're glad to be here tonight. I know I am too, and I'm very thankful that you've come tonight. If you weren't here, we wouldn't be able to meet together. You know, the Bible says that we should consider one another to love, to, unto love and to good works. And I'm glad tonight that I'm, I'm able to come and, and be a part of that, and I hope that you are too. Let's lift our hand for our unsafe family, those that can't be here, those that are sick that maybe weren't mentioned. I pray that you'd remember them. pray that God would just move with that. Brother Charlie, if you would, come up and lead us in a word of prayer. And let's just ask God to, to meet us here. Remember our pastor as he stands before us tonight. pray that God would give him a special word that would move us closer to him. Heavenly Father, it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we humble our hearts for you here tonight. Lord, those of us that are here and those that are watching by live stream, Lord, we know you're not confined to walls and to spaces, that we know you're everywhere all the time, Lord. So those that are watching in their homes, you're with them just as you're with us tonight. And Lord, it's our heart's desire, our main priority is souls. And Lord... We know many need to call upon you right now, tonight, Lord, in the times in which we're living in this world. Don't put it off. 
You know if the Lord has been speaking to your heart, you need to accept that cry from Jesus. You need to say yes to Jesus and be born again right now. You don't know that you're going to have tomorrow. That's a grave mistake that's made throughout this land. People always think they have tomorrow. But we're here tonight. And you're here, Lord. And we know that your power is among us, Lord. We can feel your Holy Spirit with us tonight, Lord. And we know that you're with those that are watching. And Lord, we have many that are praying at these altars tonight, Lord. Uh, Lord, you know their hearts. Many needs have been mentioned tonight, but many haven't been. But you know the heart. You know those needs, Lord. Uh, Lord, you're able to stand in the midst of these storms, the trials of life. Lord, you can say, peace be still. Uh, oh, Lord, we know that you are as we sing greater than any mountain you're greater than any valley lord uh, we know that if we'll put our trust and our faith in you that there's nothing that you cannot there's nothing that you will not do for your children uh, oh god we pray for this service tonight lord uh, we pray for the pastor and the word the message that you've given him we pray that every one of us uh, that have an ear will open our ears our heart and our minds and receive uh, the word of god tonight that we might grow thereby Oh, Lord, and not as let us not stop at just hearing your word, but let us take that word and apply it. Let us do what your word says. Oh, Lord, many are out here tonight. They're hungry. Many are hurting. Many are homeless, Lord. Oh, we pray that you would find shelter. We pray that you'd find food, that they be brought to you, Lord. Oh, Lord, tonight we pray for our military, wherever they might be throughout this great globe. We pray for your hand of safety upon them, Lord. Uh, be with the leaders of this nation. Uh, oh, how they need to fall upon their face and they need to humble themselves before you, God. Uh, oh, we know you are the answer. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight. Oh, God, that you would search all of our hearts. Uh, we pray constantly for revival, Lord. Uh, oh, our pastor is very passionate about it. Oh, he prays and he cries out to you all the time about revival. But, Lord, we need to search our hearts. Uh, each and every one of us need to be right uh, where you would have us to be. Oh, God, have your way with each and every heart tonight. Do a miraculous work as only you can, Lord. And, Lord, when you work... Let us stand and give honor and glory to you among the people. And Heavenly Father, we give you all praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jade's coming up to saying, I just like to, I just like to thank the Lord for. I'm sitting here thinking about all the blessings God's done for me, and um, you know I come here about three and a half years ago, and I was pretty broken at the time. A lot of things happened in my life, and you know God fixed all of that, and He's um, He's definitely worthy of all the praise that we give Him. Sometimes He doesn't work as fast as I want Him to, but I'm so thankful that He does. And I'm thankful that I'm where I am today, um, where God, what God's done for me. I, my sister, um, we're going to sing a song tonight after she gets done. But I'm, I think about the situations that God's helped me through. And I don't even know how I got into them, to be honest with you, how, how the devil does that. But I'm so thankful that if you're faithful to God, he's faithful to you. And, you know, and I asked Jade about six months ago, I, I went up to her and I said, hey, you know, I heard her sing in choir, and I thought, you know, I said, I listened to her sing, and I said, you know, you got a good voice, you ought, to, you ought to sing. So she sent me about five or six songs, probably about six months ago, and she said, I'll sing if you help me. You know, and it, shouldn't, shouldn't we have that kind of spirit, you know, to help other people, to encourage them to do good works? And uh, I never heard from her for a long time, and then her Tony got with her, and she said, hey, I'm going to put you on the schedule. And she's a little nervous tonight, and I, I know she is. But listen, I want you, she picked out such a good song, such a good song. And I want you to listen to the words of it because I think this is where a lot of people are today.
day is just another struggle. Every choice is an act of war. Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize worth fighting for. When it feels like I'll never make it, when my heart's crying out for more. Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize worth fighting for. This song my sister wrote, uh, I don't know, probably, I don't know how long ago it's been, Tina, probably 30 years or better, I don't know. I was 20. Well, it might have been longer than that. <laughs> but anyway, we sung this song a long time ago, and, and like I told you, my, me and my sister had kind of been distant for a while, and, and uh, her husband passed away, and you know, sometimes heartaches bring you back together. And uh, we got to talking again. I've uh, been talking every day. She's been going through a lot of struggles since he passed. And, and, um, but God, you know, God has a timing for everything. But with everything that God does, it still takes the blood that covers our sins. And that's what this song says. It's a really good song. I don't know why somebody hasn't picked it up and sung it. But I want you to listen to the words if you haven't heard it before. And it just, it just says it still takes the blood. Brother Kenny asked us to do this song. Yes. 
set your soul free. God's plan has never changed. No, he's never changed. His word still remains the same. Cause Jesus' precious blood. It was his love that rescued you and through the Bible, God commands that all men and women everywhere are to worship. Exclusively, God desires and deserves our worship. From Exodus, the 34th chapter, God says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. To where it simply says at the end of that verse in Revelation 22, verse 9, it simply says, worship God. We're to worship God. But there's a phrase that is repeatedly used in the Bible that has to do with worship. And it describes to whom we bestow our worship and the beauty of how we are to worship. Amen. And that phrase is repeated. And I'll read it to you out of Psalm, the 96th chapter, where it says, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. In other words, God wants us to worship him. God is the only one that we are to give our worship to. God delights in our worship. When we worship in the beauty of holiness. As one writer well puts it, the great passion in the heart of every human being who is created in the image of God, is to experience the awesome majesty of God's presence. The highest accomplishment of humanity is entering into the overwhelming presence of God. Nothing else can fulfill or satisfy that God-given desire that God has put in you and I. I truly believe when it comes to worship of God, there should be no such thing as, well, this is how the Baptists do it. Or this is how the Methodists do it. Or this is how the Pentecostals do it. Or this is how the Catholics do it and so on. 
But when it comes to worship, the, sh- the matter should be, this is how the Holy Ghost does it. If the church's atmosphere is conditioned by prayer, and brother it is, then true worship charges the atmosphere with the energy of God. True worship will alter the atmosphere of the church. True worship sweetens the sacred atmosphere of our fellowship. How many know true worship livens the church? True worship awakens the church. True worshiper makes God's people, true worship makes the church the church. And as the Bible says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Now, folk, we're here to worship tonight. And we need to worship him. No matter what other people are doing tonight, we're here to worship the Lord. God deserves our worship. And so tonight, with that in mind, I want to you pay attention tonight to where Jesus gives great insight into the true worship and the truth on worship, where he met a woman who was stubbornly bound in her tradition. And I tell you, I've met people that are stubbornly bound in tradition. In the fourth chapter of John, if you have your Bible tonight, let's turn together and let's, let's stand together as we begin. John, the fourth chapter, we pick up in verse 20. The Bible says, Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. This is the woman speaking to Jesus. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We worship what? We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. May God add His blessing to His Word tonight. Our message is entitled, Let Us Worship. Father, we thank You, Lord, for the opportunity to be together once again and to preach Your Word. We pray, dear God, that you would give us that holy boldness. May the fire of Pentecost touch every heart. And Lord, may the gospel continue to go forth from our services. May Christ be honored and lifted up in all that we say and do. And Lord, may men and women who walk into this place and this house of worship, Lord, experience the awesome glory of the presence of God. Lord, bring conviction upon sinners. Lord, heal the backslidden. Lord, revive those that are drying up spiritually. And Lord God, we pray tonight, give us the mind of Jesus to face this new year. We know we have God before us who can be against us. So Father, we pray tonight, help us to lovingly, and boldly tonight speak the truth. And we give all the glory to Christ. We pray in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen, Amen. amen. Please, you may be seated. Our desire as worshipers of the Lord God of all creation ought to be to experience regularly Spirit-filled, Spirit-inspired Spirit-empowered, Christ-exalting, Christ-centered, God-glorifying, devil-defeating, heartfelt, burden-lifting, life-liberating, holy worship. That ought to be our desire, to experience this on a regular basis, because God will be worshipped. How many know tonight He deserves our worship? We're saved so that we may become true worshipers of God. If there's anything we've learned in the past two plus years of all the sickness 
that's been going on, we've learned how fragile life is. We've learned how freedom is taken for granted until freedoms are taken away. But we've also learned how we must sacrifice at times. But also the church, we can learn, we've learned the church can be stripped of lesser things. Have we not had at times go without activities? We've gone out, we've gone without our dinners. Oh, Lord help us. We, we've, we've not, we've stopped using the offering plates. We, we, at times we've held back from giving hugs and handshakes. But the church can never be stripped of her worship of God. Christ is still the true king. He will always be the king. And he will always be worshipped. When the devil tempted Christ, Satan wanted the worship. Do you remember? The Bible records in Matthew 4. It says again, the devil taking them up into a high, exceeding high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. In other words, the devil tried to get Jesus to divert his worship from God the Father and place it upon something less. The devil wants to rob us of God-glorifying worship. I'm going to say that again. The devil wants to rob you and I of glorifying God in our worship. But we are called to worship the Lord, and we're called to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. True worship, I believe it, will make Christ attractive to this ugly, violent, sin-filled world. True worship of Christ will make it attractive. Man, when you look out on this world, there's nothing but ugliness. There's ugly division. There's ugly coldness. There's ugly humanistic religions. But this I do know, my friend, that worshiping a cold statue or worshiping in cold formalism or worshiping in a cold rehearsed religion can never warm the heart like the Holy Ghost can. Jesus gives us great insight into true worship tonight. And of the truth in worship here in John the fourth chapter. Notice first of all in verse 20, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, the woman said, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. In other words, what Jesus is saying is worship is not in any one given location. We don't just show up here because automatically that just by coming, worship is going to happen, my friend. It takes more than that. It takes hearts that are touched by God. It takes men and women who are filled with the Spirit of God. It takes the unity of God's people where Christ be glorified. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost to make worship real worship. And brother, if there's anything we need tonight, we need more of the power of the Holy Ghost in the church. Now, I don't believe in gambling. I just don't believe that gambling is good for a person. I don't believe in placing bets. And now Ohio's got sports betting. I don't believe in playing lotteries or all forms of gambling. Why? Because it's not good stewardship of God's, as God's stewards. But many churches are like a worship slot machine. You put a nickel in, you pull the lever, and out comes the bells and whistles of some production. Some are like rock concerts. I've listened to some services, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't hear the people singing. Why? Because the music. I mean, it would absolutely blow your hair off, or blow it back. 
some try to sing like the radio. That's not true worship. If I wanted to hear somebody singing like the radio, I'll just turn on the radio. Some are just wanting to be heard. But something's missing. Something's missing. Now you're going to have to help me preach this tonight because this is not going to be easy. One of my favorite writers of worship I read often of because I want to learn more about worship. I think we all, all ought to be wanting to learn more about what it means to worship God. Brother A.W. Tozer, he well put it, he said, I wonder often in worship services today who is really in charge. Where is the authority behind some of the worship happening in our churches today? I question whether it is really the authority of the Holy Ghost as it was in the days of the apostles. And I read that and I say, well, amen. Because there's a difference between worship being taught and a worshiper by being touched by the Holy Ghost of God. You can try to teach people how to worship, but brother, when you're touched by God, worship just kind of happens. There's a difference between worshiping from the head and worshiping from the heart. We can mouth words, but brother, I want to tell you, listen, I, I appreciate all of our singers. But brother, I want to tell you, there's a difference when somebody gets up here and they're just singing to try to impress somebody. I don't care if a singer gets up here and they can't hold a note worth a lick. Brother, if it's anointed by God, God will bless it. And I've been in some services, man, I want to tell you what. Man, the Spirit of God moved. What are you trying to say? We can give God lip service or we can give God love. From deep within our hearts. One of the strongest rebukes Jesus gave regarding worship is where he said, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Is that not what Jesus is teaching here to this woman in John the fourth chapter? Notice, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what we worship. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So secondly, what Jesus is showing is that true worship flows out of a man or a woman that is truly saved. True worship flows out of a man or woman that's saved. We're to be on guard against the things that will interfere or replace or come between our worship of our Lord. We've got to be on guard. Just like the devil tempted Jesus to divert his worship, I'm going to tell you the devil will try to divert worship off of God upon almost anything else. God says in Deuteronomy 11 verse 16, Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, that you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. In other words, God's saying don't put other things before Him. Don't allow other things to come between you and Him. Don't, take, don't allow anything to replace or to take His place. He is worthy of all of our worship. The Apostle Paul warned of a time in Romans where he said, in Romans 1.25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Listen, creature worship instead of Creator worship is happening everywhere. There are certain things that will hinder our worship. To just name a few, first of all, Sin will worship, will hinder the worship of God. If there's sin, brother, I'm going to tell you, we need to get it right before God. Man or woman can't worship when there's sin in their life. You cannot worship God. You can't worship in the, with clean hands. You don't have a pure heart. Listen, the first thing we ought to do is pray, God, search me and try me and see if there be any wicked way in me so that I can worship you. 
The second thing that I've understood will interfere with worship is having a wrong spirit. Hello. Man, if we don't, if we come with a bad spirit, listen, if you've got unforgiveness, you cannot worship God in spirit and in truth. When there's jealousies or there's strife, a wrong spirit, even a person who wants, has a big ego, they want to be seen, they want to be heard. You can't worship God. Worshiping God is not a show. This is not a stage. It's not for showing off. It's for glorifying God. God chastised me a long time ago. This is not a stage. This is a platform where God is worshipped, where His Word goes forth, where the Holy Spirit is to fill men and women who are broken and poured out. When we got a wrong spirit, brother, I want to tell you, we are hindering the worship. I've learned that. I've learned that. Well, I'll tell you what, there's been times I've had to go to the altar and pray before I could ever even preach. Well, there's something else that can hinder worship, and that is lack of, lack of preparation. When we aren't prayed up, when we haven't prayed and sought God, that can hinder worship. Another thing is just empty words and too much talking in the service. Listen, that can override what the Spirit of God wants to do. It seems like these days everybody wants to preach. But I want to tell you what, we need to allow the Word of God to go forth with the power of God and the anointing of God and let God bring conviction upon men and women. Well, since I'm digging deeper, I might as well go on. Other things that will um, interrupt worship. I don't know how many times I've been in services where it just seems like, man, there's equipment malfunction and there's the sound goes crazy and haywire and there's interruptions. Interruptions in the worship service and the opposition of Satan. He wants to try to hinder the worship of God. Well then finally, I've learned that stubbornness and being not open to the Holy Spirit will severely hinder our worship. I'm not trying to preach it to anybody tonight. I want us to have spirit-filled worship. I want to enjoy the worship of God just as much as you do. And these are the things that I have just out of my own life have understood that these things can truly hinder our worship. Notice what Jesus teaches here. He says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So the third thing that Jesus is teaching us is spiritual worship flows out of spirit-filled people. Worship must flow out of us. And man, when worship is flowing out of us, we don't have to cheerlead. We don't have to browbeat people. We don't have to try to drag people. But I tell you what, when the Spirit of God is moving through our lives and He has the authority to move and we allow Him to move, listen, God's presence will be manifested. In Revelation, we're brought face to face with the biblical scene of worship. Nobody could read Revelation and not at least begin to understand a little bit more about what worship is like in heaven. In the throne of God and true worship where John sees. He sees Jesus Christ in the midst of the seven candlesticks. He writes to us in, in Revelation 1 verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the path with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. 
and his feet like unto fine brass if they burn in a furnace and his voice is the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that liveth was dead and behold I'm alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death those seven candlesticks represent the true church that Christ is in our midst that we gather together in him we gather for him we gather in his name this is where the presence of God is manifested As Jesus promised in Matthew 18, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. It is to this that we cling, my friend. It is to this that we can experience just as the early church experienced. That when we gather together in his name and in through him, my friend, he will manifest his presence. Just as we're commanded by God in the scriptures. Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, our gatherings in Christ are for the reason that the power of God may be manifested. Where the broken are healed, where the lame can walk, where the bound are free, where the deaf can hear, where the blind man can see, where the sin sick can be healed, when the sinner man or sinner woman can be forgiven. That's why we come together and worship the King, my friend, so that Christ can do His work through you and I. And that lives will be transformed Through men and women who have learned it's not about us. It's about Him. We're here for Him. We're here to worship Him. It's that He would be glorified. That He must increase and that we must decrease. Our gatherings in Christ are so that we can experience the power of God. That's number one. Brother, I want to tell you what. If we're not here to see the power of God, what are we here for? Our gatherings in Christ are so that we can experience praise of God. So that we may praise Him, the one who's worthy. Just as John saw that throne of God, he saw the one seated upon the throne. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each one of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. They rest not day nor night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. John sees in the very glory and throne room of God where he sees the Lamb. He sees the one seated upon the throne. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. Cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Can I tell you tonight, my friend, if you find worship boring, if you find yourself that you just can't worship God, my friend, we've got to look into what heaven is going to be like. We've got to start here and now if we're going to worship then and there. John sees the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ. He sees the book that is open. He sees the throne of God. He sees the redeemed around the throne. And he hears the song of the redeemed. 
And they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And then made us kings and made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Say with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Amen. Say, why are you reading all this? Because I know most of you don't read Revelation. <laughs> Every creature was is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea, and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing, and honor, glory, and power. Be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. The four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth. He lived a sinless life for you and I as the Son of God, the God-man. God wrapped himself in flesh, became one like us, that, that we could enter into the very presence of God. He went to that cross for you and I, dying, so that you and I could be saved. His blood that was shed, my friend, has the power tonight to cleanse any man or woman from their sin and to put their name in the book of life. He was buried and the tomb was covered, but thank God on the third day, my friend, Jesus came to life by the power of God. God raised him from the dead. He lives. He ascended to the right hand of God. And one of these days, he's coming back, my friend. And he won't be coming to reign upon this earth. He reigns already right now. In the hearts of those that love him and worship him. My friend, if there's anything that we could learn from this, if I could go on and read in Revelation 7 where it says, And this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Well, I might as well just read it. <laughs> and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. I think in our modern day, where church is so, I don't know, it just seems to be so unreal. We need to learn again the value of true worship. And that the church's responsibility that we have is to provide an atmosphere where men and women could come in and they could fall down upon their knees in humility to the worship of Christ, the Lord, the God, the Master of all things. Amen. My challenge to you tonight would be, first of all, why don't you put aside all else? And come yourself and worship the Lord. Put aside lesser things that get in the way and interfere with your worship between you and God. First, the second of all, Christ is in our midst. If we come here and gathered in his name, he's here tonight. I know he's here. And so that we can come to him, not only in worship, but we can come with all of our needs. No matter what others do. Thirdly, my challenge to you tonight is that you would come and say, Lord, fill me so that I can worship you rightly and that worship flows out of me. Worship. My friend, I think we've only scratched the surface tonight of what it really means to worship God. Tonight as we prepare a song of invitation, I'm going to ask you tonight to get up out of your seat and come and bow before the Lord. 
And in absolute adoration, first of all, thank Him for bringing you through another year. Thank Him that through all the difficulties of this year and all the trials, thank Him that He's been faithful to you. Can we at least do that tonight? As we stand to our feet, we come and we bow before Him and we thank Him for bringing us through this year. For being the one whom we can, find, can always depend upon and find help from. The one in whom we love and adore. So come tonight and thank Him. For I believe that if we're not thankful, my friend, we could be in trouble for the future. And so tonight as we close out this season and this year of these services, and next time we come together will be a new year. Let's pray that we will experience more of God than anything else. That lives will be transformed. That the power of God will heal the sick, raise the dead, touch lives, encourage the discouraged, lift the weary. Let's pray tonight that the manifest presence of God would be upon us, congregation. That we will see many, many come to Christ before it's too late. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray tonight, let our worship, let our honor and praise and thanksgiving always be pure. May we worship you in the beauty of holiness. May our lives reflect the image and glory of God. May Christ always be exalted. May the name of Jesus be honored. And may many find their way to the old rugged cross and find salvation. Thank you in Jesus' name. Come on. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place and I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord there are sweet expressions on each face 
appreciate the message tonight. I hope it encouraged you tonight, and I hope uh, it'll encourage you to do better this year. Try to stay on fire on the firing line, stay on fire for God, because I'll tell you, the people out there need it, and I hope and pray you'll dedicate your heart to do that this year. It's been a good year, and I thank God for it. So let's all gather around the church. We'll be dismissed in prayer.